Hey everyone, it's Monique Renewed. Welcome to part two of the Purpose Driven Life book discussion series, days 11 and 12. If you haven't seen part one yet, which are days 9 and 10, I will leave the link in the bio. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video and we will see you guys soon. Bye. I hope it's still recording. You ever have that fear? Oh, I hope not. Yes, yeah, still recording. Hey, Good. that leads us on to day yeah. eleven: becoming best friends with God. We about to have relationship, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> we try to have relationship, y'all. It's about relationship. It's about relationship. And so here it says, God wants to be your best friend. If you never thought you had a best friend, you got a best friend in God, y'all. Mm -hmm. You got a friend in me. You got a... No, let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it says your relationship to God has many different aspects. And God is your creator and maker, Lord and master, judge, redeemer, father, savior, and much more. But the most shocking truth is, or truth is this, almighty God yearns to be your friend. He yearns to be your friend, y'all. If you ain't think you had any friends, you better talk to God because he's right there and he will be your friend. He won't be your best friend on top of that. He wants you, he wants to know you and you to know him. Exactly. I think that's a lot of things that uh I don't know, especially like for teenagers and stuff like I don't have no mm. friends and stuff like that. For like younger adults, right. guess what? You got a friend. You do have a friend. And that's Jesus and God. You got a friend in them for real. And here it states that what a friend we have in Jesus, but actually God invites us to enjoy friendship and fellowship with all three persons of the Trinity. You got three friends. <laughs> got three friends. Okay, you got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, boo-boo. <laughs> three friends. <laughs> three. And it also states that the word for friend in this verse does not mean a casual acquaintance but a close trusted relationship so. mm -hmm. and um and actually the uh verse that it was speaking of is this one it says jesus said i no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business instead i have called you friends for everything that i learned from my father i have made known to you Oh, what's the primary <laughs> thing with best friends? They share secrets, right? That's what God does with his friends. He he he, he shares information. He, right, he shares information <laughs> with you. Yes, he shares his information. Intimate too. Mm -hmm. Intimate information. He shares it. And that goes like you said, them secrets or friendships that you, yeah, you share intimate information with this friend. And here it says, he is a God who is passionate about his relationship with you. So he's passionate about having a relationship with you. And it also states here that knowing and loving God is our greatest privilege and being known and loved is God's greatest pleasure. So yeah, I think that's nice. And now here on a point um, that he makes here is through constant conversation. How you gonna have a friend you don't talk to him? I'll wait. What, what you do? You, you you gotta talk to your friend. If you don't talk to your friend, how you gonna get to know them? How you gonna get to know them? How you gonna know intimate? How you gonna know intimate information if you don't even say nothing? <laughs> you gotta speak, sweetie. Yes. You gotta speak. Like you know what I mean? And so that I mean, I felt I felt like that was just. What more do I need to say? Through constant, constant. It says constant conversation. Mm -hmm. That's that pray without ceasing portion. Prayer is just literally conversation. It is. It's a conversation that you need to have. And so we're going to go into some specifics about that conversation, conversation piece because I felt like that was kind of like blah. 
<laughs> and so here it talks right here um the point that um as far as the conversation piece it goes the bible tells us to pray all the time but how is it possible to do this well here we go in the book it states one way is to use breath prayers now you're like breath prayers what so he goes on to say that throughout the day as many christians have done for centuries who choose a brief sentence or a simple phrase that can be repeated to Jesus in one breath, like, you are with me, I receive your grace, I'm depending on you, I want to know you, I belong to you, help me trust you, just talking about that trust piece. You can also use a short phrase, phrase of scripture, for me to live is Christ, for me to live is Christ mm -hmm. okay you will never leave me you are my God and he goes to say that um prayer is prayer pray pray it as often as possible so it's rooted deep in your heart so you know that's you know God God knows your heart right so it says just be sure that your motive is to honor God not control him so try and tell him what to do mm-hmm God, I said this all the time. Where you at? Don't control him. Don't control him. Don't try to control him. Don't do it in a manipulative way of like saying, "Well, I said, right? I'm and help me trust you, depend on you, God. Where you at?" A video I was watching before you came here. The guy was like, "Some people be praying like this. God, do this, do that, do that, and make sure this person has that. This person, make sure I have that. Amen." And then just leave. And I'm just like. God must be looking at you like, like crazy. It's you crazy. <laughs> you crazy. <laughs> and I'm over here like I don't want to bother God. <laughs> right. You you on the other end of the spectrum. God, thank you. Amen. Right. Turn around, leave. <laughs> this person like God do this that third thing. He Amen. says he checked now. He gonna check that heart because your motive. If it ain't honoring the God, you, he knows when you're trying to control him. He'll know. So and it says practice. Practicing the presence of God is a skill, a habit you can develop. It's like anything or any skill or a habit that you play piano mm -hmm. or anything that you learn, doing hair or anything that you practice. It's the same thing mm -hmm. with God. It's a skill that you want to develop and a habit that you want to develop. And here it says, we don't praise God to feel good, but to do good. So don't be praising God. I'm praising God because I'm feeling right. good. You're doing it because you want to do good. Do good. Do good things, do good deeds, do good. That's why you praise God, so that you do good, okay? Yes. And here also states that your goal is not a feeling, but a continual awareness of the reality that God is always, he's ever present. God is ever present, so we should definitely know that. But here is a way of conversation, a point that it makes here is through continual meditation. I like now I like that they brought this up because now he's going to go into specifics of meditation. I think there's a lot of people that we know that do meditation already like mm -hmm. but they're not I don't know it's specific it's not really god centered meditation. So that's why I like this piece because now it's going to tell you about the continual meditation that you have with God. Mm -hmm. And it says here in the book a second way to establish a friendship with God is by thinking about his word out your day so it also states here but meditation is simply focused thinking right it says when you think about a problem over and over in your mind it's called worry mm -hmm. but it says when you think about god's word over and over in your mind that's meditation yeah that's the point i had actually highlighted as well and it's so amazing to me it's like sometimes we worry more than we think about god's word and it's like okay what are we worshiping I are we through that one that's, great. <laughs> that's me worry is me for sure right are we worshiping you know our fears or worshiping god you're already saying this is bigger than god so it's like that had me like really thinking and it's like oh so the antidote to worry is god's word that's how you and that's that's meditation mm-hmm Thinking about God's word is your meditation, your continued meditation for God. That's yeah. how you, that's that's what meditation is right there. So 
So I like I like that they made that point. And that's that's really that's that's really it. So I, and I think that goes back to that conversation, like having that conversation. That conversation is through God's word, through your meditation. Mm-hmm. So yep. you know, don't forget that. And that's kind of that's kind of the points I got through that because at the end of the day, again, have the conversation. How how are you gonna be a friend to somebody you don't talk? Constant conversation. <laughs> I'm guilty though. I'm guilty. See? <laughs> How you gonna have? How you gonna have? I'm so I'm so okay. That's uh, we're gonna go to the question. Okay, I, I okay. Think that's part of the question. Okay, here we go. So go ahead and read. We're gonna she gonna read the points of ponder. So here the points of ponder is God wants to be my best friend. Verse to remember: friendship with God is reserved for those who reverence Him. Psalms. I keep saying Psalms with an S. I know Psalm twenty five forty A L B. And to reverence means to have um, fear, like res- to respect. Right, right. There you go. And questions to consider: What can I do to remind myself to think about God and to talk to Him more often throughout the day? So with me, it's like I think about God, like all, like literally all the time. But like for some reason, like I don't really talk to Him, and that's just me as a person. Like if you meet me, I'm not really a. a I mean, despite these videos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Huh? What? Where she going? But like I'm not initially, I'm not like a like you know I don't talk a social, lot, social right? Butterfly, right? Yeah, that's what they would call it, social butterfly. And I feel like I treat God the same way, but mm. the thing is, I have more conversations in my head than I do in, through my I mouth. <laughs> so it's, it's like, like right, right. Right, right? So I'm in my head too much. So I was like, okay, for me, I need to redirect what me speaking to myself and speaking to God, and that's how I can do that better. Like, and you and you're doing fine because that's how he made you. Right. You got to work. He's working those kinks <laughs> like, out, right? I'm ironing you out a little bit. I'm getting you there because the mere fact that, like you said, like for me knowing you, mm. some people wouldn't have known that. They're like, right. oh, she like, God, you go for it. But in real life, I'm like, 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 show me your work. What's your Like, what's my work? <laughs> but it's God how God created you but he works through you right so and 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 that's just that what matters is that he knows he works through, he, he's work he works through you he works exactly. through all of us you mm-hmm. know what I mean so cause I ain't gonna lie I'm a social butterfly but some of us social butterflies can put a foot in our mouth so we gotta be careful <laughs> <laughs> but that's how God <laughs> created and he's behind you there Cause some of us can put the, the foot right in our that foot go right in our mouth. Poof, we just you know what I mean? Cause we talk too much. But you know, I think I have I think I've learned some of those things of as far as my myself. And sometimes that I need to listen more. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I think I've I think I've worked some of those out. So mm-hmm. Keep my mouth closed. Yeah. And listen more. It's a balance. Yeah, it's a balance. It's a balance. But that works ourselves into day twelve, mm-hmm. developing your friendship with God. Now we're going to figure out how you can develop this friendship with God. And here it states, you are you are as close to God as you choose to be. So I think that's a prime example of any friendships that we mm-hmm. have. Like You're going to be as close to your friend as you choose to be. If you don't call them, if you don't, you know, go out with them, that's the end of that friendship. Really. Man, if you don't talk to them, right. yeah, I mean, and then, yeah. Right. And then you're like, oh, I'm not as close to God. Well, I'm sorry, but. How, how that friend supposed to know? <laughs> how are you supposed to get to know that friend? And that friend supposed to get to know you. You ain't. It, it's kind of all you're right. <laughs> you chose it to be this way. And draw near to God. He will draw near to you. He already loves you. He's, he's like, hello, I'm right here. And it's like, he's waiting for you. So. You know, take them steps now. Right. You know, and it says like any friendship. Oh, friend. I didn't even know that was the verse. Yes, it says right there for <laughs> Draw close to God and God will draw close to you. So uh, there you go. You already yeah. on it. But that's, it's so funny that it's, it's, it's really actually in our natural nature. We just don't seem to practice, like it says, or make it a habit yeah. or a skill to just be like, let me, um, let me talk to, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Or let me call up or let me see, you know what I mean? It, it is. It's, and I think a lot of it can be our daily lives that get distractions, but right. Um, it says here, like any friendship, you must work at developing your friendship with God. So you got to work. Man, that's even regular your partnership, your spouse. And it's amazing to me how these relationships are almost parallel. Like he gives us examples. What it's like with him. It's like, it just blows me thinking again. I know. Like, you're it's like, just like, blowing my mind. Like, like it's like the same thing. Right. right. What am I? 
right. It's the, it's the same thing. And it says here, if you want a deeper, more intimate, like I was saying, connection with God, you must learn. To, now, this I like this word always because I just, something about this word just always just, it's just, it, it's my life. This word, it says right here, it says, with God, you must learn to honestly, honestly. God loves that word too. <laughs> Honesty. Oh my God, that word. I just, I, I feel like I try to, it's like my, it's like my, it's like, what do you call it? Like your anthem. And I live by the honesty because it's, it's the best way to make connections too. When it's honest, then you don't, then you don't have to be questioning. You're like, mm -hmm. it's honest. So if, again, I'm sorry. It says, if you want a deeper, more intimate connection with God, you must learn to honestly share your feelings with him. Trust him. When he asks you to do something, learn to care about what he cares about and desire his friendship more than anything else. Boom. Mm, drop the mic. Like, <laughs> but yeah, it's and then here's the point. It says, I must choose to be honest with God. And it's so fun. God already knows everything, but he still wants you to be honest. Like, it's so crazy to me. Like, because it's like being honest with yourself. Like, you're honest with yourself and you're being honest with God. Like, God knows, but like, I guess it helps you to just open up. And, yeah. And trust. And it helps you more. You, yeah. You, you don't want no fake relationship with God. He going to know it. He going to sense it. Then you going to deal with the consequences. Because, all right? Like, he going to know. But be honest, because it's like be honest with yourself, and God will be honest with you. You don't want you don't want God to be fake with you. You want God to be fake with you, because we ask we ask why so much, right. right? So what makes it what makes us think that us putting up like untruthful things or saying untruthful things to God, like He knows. So it's like, dang, you gonna treat me like that? Right. That's how you. That's how you want to treat me. You that's want, not a friend. That's not a friend. He don't want that. He wants you to be honest. Well, let me tell you something. <laughs> I can go on and on. Let me, let me tell you something. <laughs> let me tell you something. <laughs> but yeah, and it goes to say that the first building block of a deeper friendship with God is complete honesty. Guys, let me tell you something. If you don't, if, if anything that you want to build deep, just start. Okay. I know a lot of us are working on our relationship with God, but if you just want to see an example, I mean, I just, I don't know. Walk in honesty with any relationships that you have with people. Now, is a way that you present honesty, mm -hmm. because don't just be willy-nilly about it. I'll right. be honest. Don't be rude and- Don't be, yeah. right. Now, your attitude about your honesty is also a factor mm -hmm. as well, but- Honesty is a is a really it's a it's a real thing, y'all. Like it's a real and it's a real tough thing because a lot of people can't be honest with. Yeah, we love to hide stuff and bury. That's what Adam and Eve did for real, for real. <laughs> they hid. They that's the first thing that they hid from God. Like and God's over here telling you to be honest. He wants you to be honest. We went back. Let's go back to the beginning of the Bible. <laughs> Adam and Eve, right? They and I understand that they felt shame and all that, but. All they had to do was be honest with God. Look, we, you know, we ate the apple. Not that, because then the blame came in there. Right. It was this person. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, just be honest. You was right there with her. You ate the apple too, and then let it go. And he, he, because he already knows. Right? I wonder what would have happened. I, you know, I, I know. <laughs> You see, this is me thinking, I wonder what would have happened with this. But you know what, God? This, so this is what happened. Yeah, you know, Satan came over there. And I was like, the, the serpent was over there talking to Eve. And then I just, and I was like, what girl would he tell you about? Oh, what? And she passed me the apple and I ate it too. That's what happened. I'm sorry. I wonder what would have been God's reaction like. I know, like. <laughs> You know what I mean? But the blame and the shame and the complaining yeah, and boom. all that it was it complained about. You gave right. her. The, girl, all these connections, like you complaining, you blaming, you shaming, all this. Oh my God. He don't want none of that. He want, he just want an honest to have that deep conversation with you. And here it says, it's funny because it says here, again, it says, 
Okay, so it says the first building block of a deeper uh, friendship with God is a, is complete honesty about our faults and your feelings. So if Adam would have just been honest, boom, whatever, I fault, I'm a that fault, and this is just honestly how I felt. Like you know, and he and he did kind of explain it in a sense, mm -hmm. but it was like a blame. It was a blame game. It was a blame game. And it also says if perfection was a requirement for friendship with God. We would never be able. We wouldn't even to be here for one. <laughs> so just know, any relationships that you have, a friendships, they ain't gonna be perfect. And don't put them on and this pedestal. Don't have don't all do these it. expectations and stuff because it's gonna drown it. Because then you want to stop your communication, right? Mm -hmm. Don't don't. This go back to that conversation I was having with you, right? <laughs> About these expectations and these pictures. You paint this perfect picture in your head and in your like, head and, and then, then when they don't side, need it and when it goes sideways then you're like oh no but if god did that same thing with us we would not have him as a friend right. exactly he doesn't expect us to be perfect so don't expect no other human being on this earth to be perfect as well let me tell you something and here in the book it also states that in the bible the friends of god were honest about their feelings Often complaining, second guessing, accusing, and arguing with uh, the Creator, but with that, God, God, however, didn't seem to be bothered by this frankness. It says, in fact, He encouraged it. That He understood, because I think it's His way of understanding. Yeah, He understands, right? Exactly. I. It's God's way of understanding you truly and deeply. He knows. Mind blown. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Um, here it says God doesn't expect you to be perfect, but He doesn't insist on. But He does insist on complete honesty. So mm -hmm. it's okay. <clears throat> and it says here that God. It says okay. So here it also states that can God handle that kind of frank, intense honesty from you? Of course, guys. Absolutely. Why wouldn't He? He knows. He's the end all be all. He knows it. So just be straight out, right? But it says genuine friendship is built on disclosure. So he understands you. He don't, ain't nobody else's means to know. He understands and that's it. That's where it stays, right? Disclosure. Mm -hmm. That what may appear as audacity, God views as authenticity. It's authentic. You're being your authentic self. It ain't no, oh, how dare you say that? No, he, he gives you that space to genuinely be you and feel and be honest that I understand and I can understand. Because mm -hmm. you can imagine all the things that God's dealt with. So like, why would he not understand? And bearing that stuff is not good for you anyways. So that leads to bitterness, resentment. So you might as well just let it out and then you can feel better. Girl, I think that's so funny that you said that because I think he talks about that as well. Yeah, like, <laughs> it that. gets into that. It gets into exactly what she was saying. And so, um, also the point it made in the book is that people often blame God for hurts caused by others. It's because of you that I'm hurt. And it says this creates what William uh, Bacchus, Bacchus calls your hidden rife with God. So, you, you mad, but it ain't... You're not mad with them. You're mad with God. You're mad with God. And here we go. Like you said, bitterness is the greatest barrier to friendship with God. Like she was saying, that bitterness that you brought up. Again, here we go. Why would I want to be God's friend if he allowed this? See, that goes that why again. Let's <laughs> go. We always got to know why. Why? When he, why would God, why would so God trust. allow this? Oh, the antithesis or the antidote to why is trust. There we go. Girl, let me tell you something. It goes, it says the antidote, of course, is to realize that God always acts in your best interest. Why would he not, right? And it says, even when it's painful and you don't understand it. Trust him. He is. And that's so hard. 
Especially when bad things are happening. Girl, I've, 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 I've I know, questioned yeah, God. I've been, I've, been, I've been there. I've questioned God down to creation. Why <laughs> did you even create us in the first place just to have a suffer? Like, I'm, I've been there with God. Like, and that's the honesty. Like, I was to be honest. Like, why would you even do all this in the first place just for us to be missed? I was, girl, I was in my feelings <laughs> just to be miserable and all that stuff. But you was honest. I was being honest. Like, I, I was just. He was being honest and he understands and he I, he will have those explanations because it's temporary. <laughs> over, <laughs> over and beyond over there. <laughs> okay? Because it also makes a point, another point. It says, I must choose to obey God in faith. You have to have the faith, I guess. You know, you have to have the faith that there's a reason why he created all of mm-hmm. us. You know, the world, his creation. But I think doesn't it state too that the creation was that, you know, God, you know, he wanted, you know, to b- create life form. And mm-hmm. I guess maybe to share maybe how he, you know, and then and then the whole rack of stuff started happening. <laughs> you know what I mean? He wanted... You know, I think he wants to be understood as well. Right. I think God wants to be understood. How would he not want to be understood? You know what I mean? But that's hard because we got so many. Girl. We got so much, you know, going uh, almost up against us. Yeah. That it's like, okay, I'm trying to understand, Lord, but this is getting harder. (laughs) This is getting harder to understand. (laughs) You know what I mean? And it's, now here, I highlight this one. It says, unbelievers often think Christians obey out of obligation or guilt or fear of punishment but the opposite is true because we have because we have been forgiven and set free we obey out of love that's the that's the reason for everything y'all is love because God is love. So no, I don't want to, I don't want obligation or guilt, but because wouldn't you want somebody to love you too? Mm -hmm. God wants to be loved. And you know, we as humans want to be loved. Right. That's everything is, is, is love. So, and it says here that, um, and our obedience brings great joy. It says in here in the book says, Jesus said, I have loved you even as the father has loved me. Uh, remain remain in my love and when you obey me you remain in my love just as I obey my father and remain in his love I have told you this so that you will be fulfilled with my joy yes your joy will overflow I mean you'll be you'll be happy I can imagine and I can imagine what that might feel like just even more mm-hmm. you know what I mean and um and it says true friendship isn't passive, it acts. So don't have no passive relationship. <laughs> true friendships isn't passive, it acts. When Jesus asks us to love others, help the needy, share our resources, keep our lives clean, offer forgiveness, and bring others to him, love motivates us to obey immediately. You know what is so funny about this? Is that's in my daughter's Girl Scouts um, law? Mm-hmm. Is it says to help others, to use resources wisely. It's so funny because that's actually in her um, Girl Scout law. Mm-hmm. So it's a law to love others. It's so crazy how it's surrounded mm-hmm. us. And then people say God doesn't exist. God is like literally everywhere. Man, oh my God, is he? I mean, I just think that's just so funny how you just don't, you're not paying attention. Like, yep. when you pay attention. When you, <sighs> when you start seeing the details, that's when you start realizing. We let so many things pass us by, we don't even notice. That's why you, probably why most people think don't think God exists. It's when you stop and pay attention to the details, you're like, wow. The connections are yes. there. You, you, it's like, wow. You start to get, like, mind blown. Like, oh, oh my gosh. gosh. I'm like, man, he's been surrounding me for real, for real. We get so distracted. Right. How we let us get distracted? It's distracting. Oh man! And then here it goes. And not having the connection, not not having the connection to open it and and see like, wow, you are here. Mm-hmm. Oh man! But it also states here that um, 
it says, um, we are often challenged to do great things for God. And it says, actually, God is more pleased when we do small things. This is what I was telling you. I said, we're going to get to that. God is more pleased when we do small things for him out of loving obedience. And it says, they may, they may be unnoticed by others, but God notices them and considers them acts of worship. So don't think your little things of acts are nothing. They are something. And it says it gives more pleasure in the small things. And that's contrary to society. We want to do the bigger and better things. And God sees the small things. And that's what matters to him apparently the most. And it says, even through such simple acts as telling the truth. Oh, my God. Telling the truth. Not just telling the truth to yourself. Tell the <laughs> truth. And that they're honest. Also, direct those things towards yourself. Because if you be truthful to yourself and honest to yourself, you can be that outward. Mm -hmm. um, and it says, so even through such simple to acts as telling the truth, being kind and encouraging others, we bring a smile to God's face. Yep. I would like to, for I would like to see that grin on his face. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe it's the sun when the sun shines. You be like, he must be smiling <laughs> now. Or you know that little light beam that peeks through your curtain sometimes. Be like, I hope that's him smiling. Like, you know what I mean? Look, right. you know, I just be wanting to see that grin. Like, you know, I can't imagine. That that just, you imagine like, can you imagine what that grin look like? <laughs> yeah. That's too funny. <laughs> But another point it makes here in the book, it says, I must choose to value what God values. So at least have a, have a sense of his values as well. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and it states here that this is what friends do. They care about what is important to other to the other person. Mm -hmm. So they value what they value. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's a, that's a, that's a caring relationship, right? right? So um, and then it states here that the second dearest thing is when his children share the news with others. So sharing your relationship with God and just, you know, sharing that, you know, that he is good and that he, especially when he is doing good things, right? Like, yeah, that's so parallel to our relationships now. If you're, I mean, if you're like um, with somebody, if you're married with somebody, you talk about that person even when they're not around, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's so like similar to our relationship now. It's just so funny to me. You care about what they care about. You talk about them. Right. You be like, oh, my God, you know, such and such. It was, it was so nice of them. Mm -hmm. So kind of them. Oh, right. You know, sharing. Yeah. Same thing. It's the same, same thing. thing. So I'm like, you know, here it also states that to be a friend of God, you must care. OK. Yeah. You must care about all the people around you whom God cares about, too. So, you know, don't, you know. Now this one I ain't gonna lie though, okay? Like I care about people, but I can is it okay that I love them from a distance? I just be wondering, like I, I wonder because I be like, I feel bad saying that sometimes. I'll be like, I mean, I don't want God to be like, I'ma love you at a distance, but <laughs> like but I be thinking I about so, yeah. yeah, but I think about Jesus too. Like he loved us, but I wonder if he has to love us from a distance because he has to love us from a distance. You know what I mean? But he still loves us. Like, mm -hmm. is that okay too? Like certain people, yeah, like you still what... care about people, but some people can be some they, people are little, yeah. You know, they even like Lord, they on their journey. Please, <laughs> I can't have their because they, you know, sometimes you don't want to say like they're a burden because you don't want to say that, but you just be like, you know, I just you can't handle maybe some of some of the things that people, you know. So you be like, can I just love them from a distance? Can I care about them? Like I can still care about them, just not as close. Yeah, that's why you follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And that, you know, like God is not going to subject you to like. Right. certain things that people do you know what I'm like, right yeah exactly yeah. that's another right that's another thing and then it goes just to say that friends of god tell their friends about god and i think that um i think that when i you know i think about just thing like loving people from a distance but there's still good things that that person might have you mm -hmm. know what i mean and i still you still speak well of that person right. you know what i mean Absolutely. um just you know they have to kind of you gotta work God some move. things yeah. out first god gotta move right them, as you say Lord, I love them. Move, remove them, and I still love them <laughs> because you love them. You know what I mean. Right. So I love them still, and I care about them. I just need you to work through them. Right, work it's them. Not my, yeah. Because some people be trying to have you work through them. You be like, that's not my job. Right. That's God's job to work through you. You try to put the burden, and that's when you feel like the burden. But like, I'm not Lord Jesus. God. <laughs> okay, it's becoming too much. But I will love you over there. Why God works on you, right? You know, but that's the it's so uh, that's funny. So, anyways, it says, I must desire friendship with God more than anything. So, you want to desire friendship with God, 
And in, in, in this in, in this point, it states that in the book, it says that um, the, the truth is you are as close to God as you choose to be. An intimate relationship with God is a choice. It's not an accident. So you have to choose to want to be close to him. And so, and I, I mean, I think he always chooses us, right? Mm, so he, he already chose you. Yeah, so he already chose you. He's so, waiting for you to choose him. Yeah, basically. And it states here that you may have been passionate about God in the past, but you've lost that desire. Some of us have been very passionate mm -hmm. about God and then we just somewhere, yeah. yeah, we fall off. And so, and then it also states that if you've just been going through the motions, which a lot of us have, some of us have been going through the motions spiritually, don't be surprised when God allows pain in your life. That's a hard pill to swallow. Yeah, I don't, right don't want to get to that point. <laughs> right. That's a hard pill to swallow as well because you like, what you mean? You know what I mean? Pain in your life. But it says pain is the fuel of passion. He is going to draw, he wants you to draw back in. Cause you're gonna you're gonna run into the end of the road and then what you gonna you're gonna be like, I who have I, nothing else. Right, who like, am I gonna call on now? He want he gonna he gonna have you call on him. And he says also that here it says your problems are not punishment. So don't think it's a punishment, but it says they are wake up calls. Wake up, sweetie. They're not a punishment because that's a lot of us I think feel like they are being punished, right? Yeah. But it's actually supposed to be a wake up call, um, calls from a loving God because He loves you. He wants to re He wants you back in His arms and He wants you back. So it says God is not mad at you; He's mad about you, and He will do whatever it takes to bring you back into fellowship with Him. He will do anything. That's crazy that even pain will have mm -hmm. to fuel passion. He will do anything. And that just makes you think like, <clears throat> you end up thanking God for that pain because it is what draw you close, drew you closer to him. Um, I know that's, that's applicable to me because, you know, with like depression and stuff, that was one of the pain that fueled my passion to draw closer to God, like anxiety and all that stuff. That's what was the biggest, you know, Fire Probably under my butt. butt that said, you're right, that fueled right. you back. That when I was looking for back. answers, it was like, okay, yeah. here it is. Bam. And so it's here it states, it says, Dear Jesus, more than anything else, I want to get to know you um, um, intimately. It says, God told the captives in Babylon that when you get serious about finding me and wanting more than anything else, it'll make sh I'll make sure you won't be disappointed. So he's not going to disappoint y'all. He's not going to disappoint. He's not going to disappoint. And then it makes another point saying that um, Paul told Timothy, some of these people have missed the most important thing in life. They don't know God. The most important thing in life. That's the purpose right there. Right? Mm -hmm. It's to know God. <sighs> We're not even at the end of the book yet. <laughs> We're not even at the end of our days in this book yet. And so we're down to our point to ponder. And it says, I am as close to God as I choose to be. Verse to remember, draw close to God and God will draw close to you. James 4, 8, A, N, L, T. Question to consider, what practical choices will I make today in order to grow closer to God? I know I'm going to continue having these conversations, my honest conversations, because I want to have intimate an intimate and deeper connection with him. Mm -hmm. Why would you not? You know what I mean? Like, like this is God. Like, <laughs> like I want to be able to make sure that I am walking in the way in which He wants me to walk, so that because you don't want pain and you don't want you don't want to put yourself in a situation where He got right to the end of yourself. <sighs> you don't want to reach that to that point. Just like just surrender now. <laughs> S-U-R-R-E-N-D-S-U-R-E-N-D-S-U-R-E-N-D-S-U-R-E-N-D-S-U-R-E-N-D-S-U-R-E-N-D-S-U-R-E-N-D-S-U-R-E-N-D-S-
why you're dealing with the consequences that you're dealing with because of the choices you made. See, we like to uh, blame everything on some. Now, see, now you, it's the same thing, point fingers. It's, but God knows everything. Yeah, God knows everything, but God gave you free choice. Yeah, I think that's what we, that's, the, it's hard to understand the, the yeah. concept of free, free will and so, the sovereignty of God. That's like, that's where we, we get up, mixed up so much. Right, because then you're, we're saying, all of a sudden, everything's God's fault. It's like, <laughs> oh, no. we have free will. This book is good. This book is good. And I hope that you guys got something from these days. 9 through 12. 12. And I hope you made some connections. Like we made some connections. Right. We was like, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> dot, bleep, bleep, bleep. You know, it's like that. that what's that? What's that little uh, dot game. puzzle game? Right. And then, oh, look at that. And God is just pictures is coming out. Like, mm-hmm. One, two, and three, and four, and five. We at dot 12, y'all. Can't wait to. <laughs> I can't wait to can't wait till the finished picture comes out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh man, but yep. So yep. So don't forget to subscribe. Yes, yeah, subscribe. Share with your friends. Join the conversation. Join the conversation. Talk with us down in the comment section below. And we'll be here next time on Mrs. Lauren's channel. That's right. And all that will be linked down in her description box. Stay with us. Stay connected to us. We like we like this. This is good. Mm-hmm. So, all right, y'all. Bye. Bye, y'all. Peace out.